What's up hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome to another miniature rescue. Today we're going to take a look at a really cool 30 year old space marine from Warhammer 40,000. I started playing and painting Warhammer way back in the 90s when 3rd edition came out. It was a fascinating game that really captured my imagination and led me down the path of miniature games. Now I didn't end up playing for that long, maybe a couple years, and I only just started to scratch the surface of the game and its immeasurably large universe. What really drew me in though were the painted minis in the books. Large scale battles, fully painted and pretty well painted armies. And while I gravitated toward armies like the Eldar and Space Orcs, I still really like Space Marines too. They were, after all, the poster child of Warhammer and continue to be to this day. Today I am much less a fan of Space Marines. They just don't quite have the same sculpted imagination that they used to, at least in my opinion. The old sculpts just had that look to them. Early Games Workshop was different and seemingly more special. And while there are some really nice models in that range today, I think they've lost a little bit of that magic over the years. Maybe it's the nostalgia talking, but I really do miss seeing mostly metal armies that had unique quirks to them that only metal models can bring. Not too long ago, I picked up an old second edition Space Marine Devastator off of eBay. The paint job is pretty imaginative, and the sculpt is one of my favorites from that era. I thought it would be really fun to go back in time and save this little model and talk about whether or not buying these is even worth doing almost 30 years later. In short, yeah, it's totally worth it. Video over, we can go home now. But really, even if there isn't any use for this model outside of the joy of building and painting it, it's absolutely worth the time and effort to restore it back to the glory days of the early 90s, if for nothing else but to have the experience of what it was like to hobby back in those days. I plan on doing some pretty serious work on this guy, and right now he's not in the best shape. It honestly looks like this model was painted that long ago and he's been tucked safely in a drawer somewhere. So it could be worse, but I do want to drop him in a bath and see what's going on underneath that old paint. Before getting into painting this mini, let's talk about today's excellent sponsor, HelloFresh. Whenever I sit down to do a project, I tend to lose track of time. I get really focused on painting, and hobbying, and the last thing I think about doing is cooking a decent meal. This often ends in disappointment when I eventually go to eat something and all I can find are expired packets of dried noodles. Not great. That was until I finally tried HelloFresh. If you're too busy gluing on Space Marine arms, then HelloFresh is the service that you need. Foolproof, step-by-step -step recipes mean a joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on the time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less, which gives you more time to batch paint that new army. HelloFresh recipes include pre-portioned ingredients that means less prep for you and less wasted food. While waiting for primer to dry on this space marine, I was able to hop into the kitchen and cook a meal for my family. One of the meals in my latest box was barbecue cheddar burgers with chipotle aioli and potato wedges, which look super delicious and pretty easy to make. Provided in the box were of course all of the ingredients and a pretty neat little recipe card that laid out the entire process of cooking the meal. Honestly, cooking food like this is very similar to building models. All of the pieces are in the box and you just have to put them together. And if I can build a model, I should be able to cook a good meal. I did some chopping, some sauce making, and ended up with a picturesque meal on my table. It was really fun and something that I look forward to doing in the future. HelloFresh made it easy and provided great ingredients and instructions to make a good meal. And it didn't have to go shopping or spend too much time making something that actually looked and tasted really good. And HelloFresh is up to 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant or grocery shopping according to the Zagat Dining Survey, which I really appreciate because it means I can buy more minis. Right? Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code P-O-G-E-M-R-A-U-G-16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes plus 3 surprise gifts. And once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Thank you again HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to that 30 year old Space Marine. I'll start by taking apart the model and letting him soak in the Sonic Cleaner. This will remove any paint and soften up any excess glue on the model. Once he's out of that bath, I'll clean off the model using a toothbrush.
The thing about these older models is that they weren't actually made completely of metal. This model features a metal body and weapon option, but the shoulder pads, backpack, and arms are plastic. When the kit was new, this was a pretty huge step forward for models like this, but these days it kind of presents a few issues. The glue that was used to hold the plastic to the metal was put on rather thick, so it's a little tough to get off. Even using super glue remover, it's still difficult to get off the model without cutting into it. For the metal parts, it's less of an issue because it can be soaked in stronger solutions that dissolve paint and glue. The plastic from that era is also not quite the same quality that we've come to expect these days. The backpack and arms in particular are just a little bit off and they feel like they don't work with the metal very well, which is one of those kind of quirky things that I was talking about earlier. They just have that look to them. They look like they're too small and it gives the Marine kind of a squat look. I do find it pretty funny and it works, but it's still a little weird for the scale. It took a while, but eventually I was able to get the really bad stuff off of the plastic and I moved on to really cleaning up the metal. Using a Dremel with a soft wire brush attachment, I went over all of the metal to get rid of any weird surface textures or paint that was left. I like using the Dremel like this on metal models because it really shines them up and brings them back to that brand new look. And I know that they're the cleanest they can be before applying any primer or paint. While cleaning, I did find some metal flashing was left in a few places as well as some mold lines. So I clipped off the larger pieces and sanded down the rest with sanding sticks. Once the model is nice and clean and ready to go, it's time to glue them back together. Oftentimes, I see metal models with an absolute ton of glue on them, and I've certainly been in that position trying to glue metal together, just really overdoing it with the glue to try and get them to stick. But the best way to get these parts to stick is use less than you think you actually need. Just a small dot of super glue is enough to bond those pieces together. If there's too much glue, then it can't evaporate quick enough to make a good bond. And it leaves you with a ton of extra glue that dries in weird places on the model. If the parts are clean, then the metal or plastic should stick almost instantly with just a small amount of glue. I put the model together and left the shoulder mounted missile launcher off to be painted separately. In hindsight, I probably also should have left the backpack off because it actually fits over that weapon after it's attached to the model, but for now it's not a problem. We can get the model primed up and start the real work. I'm going to start with an airbrush base coat of a darker blue and slowly work my way up a couple of steps with brighter and brighter blue. Now this isn't exactly how we used to paint things back in the day, but hey, might as well use the tools I have to get the best result, right? Otherwise, a base coat with a brush will still look pretty good on this old model. You should see the brush I used to use too. It's pretty gnarly. As far as colors go, I really wanted to paint this like a lot of the old Marines that I really liked from Codexes in the 90s, which means going with the very iconic old school ultramarine paint scheme. Bright blue for the armor, red for the weapon casings, and a nice bright yellow for trim and the Aquila. The blue definitely goes down nicely, and there's a nice subtle variation in the shadows and highlights, so I'm feeling pretty good about that so far. Next up, I'll grab some ochre to base coat for the yellow trim. Luckily, there isn't a lot of yellow on this model because it can be pretty tough getting a nice base coat with that color. Using a paint like ochre that has much better coverage as a base coat can speed up that process and ensure that the actual yellow paint goes on nice and smooth. The weapons on old Ultramarines have always been really iconic to me. It's such a huge contrast with the armor and I really love the way that looks. So I'll do a coat of darker red through the airbrush and follow that up with a nice vibrant red from above. For the metallic bits on this model, I am obviously going to paint them in. Now I'm not 100% sure when this model was painted, could have been done a few months ago for all I know, but if you look at the weapon before I cleaned it and started working on it, you can see that the metallic bits on it are still showing, it's not painted in. Which I think is really cool and does show a good example of how to solve that problem before we had easy access to metallic paints for miniatures. Now in this case, 2022, I'm just going to paint them in because we have the tools and the technology to do that these days. Now that all the base coating is done, it's time to wash down the model and start the detail work. I'm going to go with my trusty Tamiya panel liner to really get in there and outline all of the pieces on the model. At first, it looks pretty bad because it really covers the model and darkens everything down, but a few drops of mineral spirits on a sponge and I can clean that up no problem. The wash really brings out the individual parts and pieces on the model and it really makes this guy look a whole lot nicer.
In order to push that separation even further and bring out that detail, I'll edge highlight all of the armor. I think it's pretty funny that in 30 years since this model came out, we are still edge highlighting Space Marine armor. It's thankfully gotten easier over the years, but it's still something that I see a ton of people struggling with, myself included. Personally, I like to use a pretty thick paint and make sure my brush isn't too overloaded. Then, using the side of the brush, it just catches that edge to make a line of paint. The metal edges on this model aren't perfect, so it actually makes for a much harder job than I anticipated. Pretty crazy when you compare it to edge highlighting a Primaris Marine that was designed with that in mind. We've come a long way. Honestly, I think he's looking pretty good at this stage, but there are a couple more things we can do to improve the overall look of this model. All of that yellow paint in particular is looking pretty flat, even with the black lining that we did. So I'm gonna glaze down some orangey brown into the shadows to give it a little more shape. Watering down this paint, making sure I don't have a ton left on the brush, I'll slowly build up that color on each yellow piece. I end my brush strokes at the point where the color needs to be strongest, so that the color can be slowly built up into a nice gradient over the yellow. After a few layers, you can really start to see that color adding depth to that yellow. I'll follow that up by edge highlighting those same pieces with an off-white that has quite a bit of yellow in it already. That will frame the color and give the impression that these yellow materials could definitely be made of metal. The last major detail I want to add to this guy is the ultramarine symbol on the shoulder pad. I almost opted for a decal here, but I figured I would try something a little bit more fun and just freehand the symbol instead. I started by drawing it on the shoulder pad with a mechanical pencil. That way, I knew basically where my lines would have to go. Then I held my breath and painted it in with a thin coat of ivory as a base coat. I think it worked pretty well, although I did draw the symbol a little bit low on the shoulder pad. I'll figure out a way to fix that in a bit, but for now I'll just do several passes of thin down white to build that up. In the end, I decided to go a little custom and bring some lines in to extend the top of that symbol to make it look a little bit taller. A little embellishment, but it really helps balance out the placement and it looks pretty cool. Even if it's not correct, technically. The last major part of this model is the base. I decided to go ultra traditional and put in a little bit of texture to cover up that slot and follow that up with a nice bit of goblin green. Well, it's not actually goblin green, but it's pretty close and definitely hits hard with that basing nostalgia. So the question is, are these old marines actually still worth buying? What do we get out of paying a pretty premium price for such an old model? Honestly, yeah, they are completely worth it if you can find them for a good price. I had a ton of fun painting this model and it felt like a completely different experience from what you can expect from today's models. The details are still sharp, the model still offers some fun things to experiment on, and what you get out of it is a piece that you can proudly display in your collection, or even use on the tabletop today. Yeah, you can still field this marine right now if you actually wanted to, and a whole squad would be awesome. Older models like this just offer something that you can't get anymore, and moreover, interesting color choices that you just don't see these days. It's just a really fun experience and something that I think if you're in the hobby, you should just try, and that makes it completely worth it. Thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please like, share, and subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, here are the final shots of that Space Marine. Thanks again.